Um, thanks for hanging in there. Uh, my name is Prakash. Uh, I wanted to present a project that I was working on recently to tackle just um, kind of a usability problem I found with uh, using Bitcoin. It started with Bitcoin, but then it turned into something else entirely. And uh, just wanted to share what I found and you know, hear what you guys have to think. Uh, so let's get this started. So this story begins with this right here. Uh, does anybody know what this is? It is. It is a Bitcoin address. Um, and it has a face only that a mother could love. Um, this was, I was really into Bitcoin at one time. And uh, when I found out that this is the way to transfer the currency, it kind of turned me off a little bit. Because how are you even supposed to remember this? Like if, if anybody could close their eyes and just repeat the first 10 characters of this string, like I don't think anybody could do that. Uh, so I thought, um, you know, it is easy enough to copy and paste this and send it from person to person, but what if there was just a better way to do this? Like how would you even organize that? How would you intelligibly share this information to other people? And so um, I wanted to get past this. Um, at the time, I was also interested in QR code. Uh, QR codes, have, uh, they have a nice way of transferring information without having a wireless or relying on a carrier signal. You can give somebody a QR code and then the QR code parser in your phone or your camera, um, it reads it and is able to parse all the, all the, the sensible information out of it. So I kind of wanted to use a similar principle to detect Bitcoin in images. So just as like a little intro, uh, this, is what, this is how the QR analyzer looks at the QR code. There are anchor points, and then there's formatting information, which are these blue lines. And then the actual encoded information is in between, so the yellow, the yellow spots. Um, so when I saw this, uh, I know QR never actually took off, because I think partially because advertisers kind of abused it. You kind of had QR codes on everything, and they weren't giving people anything useful. So uh, the, most people, including myself, kind of tuned them out. Um, but even still, I wanted to have something that you could put into any image anywhere, transfer it, and have the Bitcoin address available. So that's where PIL comes in. So PIL stands for the Python Image Library. Uh, recently, its, uh, its maintainers have not been keeping up with releases. So there is a fork called Pillow that is, has all of the same functionality as PIL. It just is updated more frequently. And uh, PIL is a great library. Uh, Python, like most of you guys probably already know, has an excellent community that has found a way to solve almost every problem in every space. And processing imaging, images is no exception. So really, you can do anything that you ever would need to do with an image with PIL. You can access raw image data. You can apply a filter. You can crop by path. You can get the EXIF info. You can write text, text characters as images. Uh, so really, you can do basically anything with this. So that's why I kind of relied on PIL. Uh, the idea is to take um, a set of characters and write them as pixels into an image. And you can do that pretty easily with a script in PIL, which is right here. Import PIL. Uh, you import the image module from PIL. You create a new RGB image, and then you just put the pixel data into the image. So this part is pretty straightforward. You take a string of characters. You convert them to pixels based on ASCII. Uh, I can get more into that later if you guys want. Um, but you convert each, each character into pixels, and then you write those pixels to a file. And then the tricky part actually comes after this when you try to extract those characters from the image. <clears throat> um, so here we are when you have, um, so you have the, I, I, I know when you like throw, throw a bunch of code on a slide, it doesn't actually make much sense to the people reading it. Um, it this, this makes sense to me because I know where it fits into the whole, the whole picture of the project, but let me just give you a basic walkthrough. So to get, uh, the pix to get each character as a pixel, you convert it by ASCII into a set of three numbers, red, green, and blue, which is the RGB string. And um, 
depending on the average use of color in the image and um, an arbitrary constant that I use to encode each pixel, which is just any number. It's a random number, actually. Uh, you can get a unique value for each pixel inside the image. And then you can write it. And then this library will output a token value after you write the, the string into the image, which you can use to get it back out, which is more or less what's happening here. Um, but the idea is kind of like a QR code. Kind of like a QR code, there are anchors written into the image that the pixel parser looks for. And uh, without getting too much off track, this pixel parser functions as a finite state machine. Uh, uh, should I show like, do you guys know what a finite state machine is? OK, cool. Uh, so the pixel parser, to, to get the, the uh, to, to notice or like to recognize the pixels that are the message and differentiate them from normal pixels in the image, it, uh, it functions as a finite state machine, which is, um, okay, so great question. Uh, a finite state machine is, it is a process that can, it can transition itself from different states um, depending on information in its current state. This is it's uh this is one of those like cursive knowledge things. I'm trying to figure out how to explain this in layman's terms. It's um think of um think of so if a robot were to scan the room looking for a chair, it would get just a boatload of raw data. You know, like colors and just a bunch of colors. So to recognize a chair, which is an intelligible form it would look for one thing first. Like it would look for an orange colored pixel. When it hits an orange colored pixel, it would transition to a state to expect another pixel that would correspond to the chair. So it would keep doing that until you reached kind of a pixel that was bordering something that would look like the end of the chair. And it would transition back to its base state, the initial state. Um, feel free to ask questions afterward. Like I know how that can sound kind of confusing. Um, but uh, by all means, let me know if it makes sense and I can clarify afterwards. So here, uh, each, each pixel of the string is put in between two anchor points. And the pixel parser, when it hits an anchor point, it transitions to a state where it expects other pixels that correspond to characters. And then when the pixel parser hits the second anchor point, it stops collecting pixels. So then it takes each of the pixels and converts them to ASCII characters and then converts each of those ASCII characters back to Unicode or whatever it is you try to encode. So here we go. Let me just show you how this works. Uh, all right. Can you guys see my terminal? No, you can't. Wait one sec. Anybody? Shout out a message to Red. Such thing about Such
So what's happened is, um, so the idea behind steganography, just a little background, is to conceal image, to conceal text within images. So the whole idea is that Bitcoin is sensitive information. It's directly tied to your money. So the idea was to encrypt the message and to give a token. So in the real, in a real world scenario, if you wanted to use this, you would encode your wallet into the image, give the image to somebody else, and also the token or the passphrase. Um, if you think this is clunky, I kind of agree. Uh, the idea originally, when I first came up with this, was to have a web interface where the token would be tied to a user's profile and everything would happen over the web. But in case you don't have an internet connection, none of this relies on the web. It's just the power of math. So here we are, the token and the image. Now we're going to get it back out. But before that, let me show you what the image looks like. So you'll see I wrote the image to Doge1. Now, usually the image takes on the average hue of the surrounding pixels, so you can't really tell that it's there. But I changed that for today so you can see what's going on. So, let's see if I can magnify this. Okay. So if you look, there's two things going on here. Let me just show you what's. So this, it's kind of hard to see from here, but on the top left, there's something called a beacon that contains the location of the first anchor. The idea was to distribute these pixels around the image. So every Every anchor contains information pointing not only to the current message string, but also other anchor points scattered throughout the image. Uh, right now, that beacon points only to the first anchor, and then this string of rainbow-colored pixels is your message. It's the encoded, encrypted message. So, now let's get it back out. And yeah, um, that was it for my formal presentation. I um, wanted to leave ample time for questions and answers. Uh, I found that these things work much better than that instead of me just spewing information in your faces. So, yeah. Um, that. I could, that part I was running into a few bugs on, but it caught me. Um, if you fork the project and help me out, we can totally make that happen. Oh, uh, it means just a space problem. What's that? Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, she asked what, what was the problem with hiding the, hiding the pixels in the image. It's really a space problem. You would have to take, like along with writing the pixels into, or writing, the, writing those pixels into that part of the image, you would have to take, you would have to store a, uh, an X by Y matrix, if you will, of the image, and then take the pixels of the top and the bottom, and then average them. It's, a, it's technically it's not that bad, it's just kind of tedious. Does it matter? No, go for it. Does it matter about the number of pixels that you Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would imagine that if you had a high res resolution to start with, mm -hmm. and you had more kind of people willing to play with it, then you can practice it and get this kind of stuff. Hmm. And then you can save it or lower it and you can practice with it. Hmm. That's, uh, you mean like, yes. oh, no, no, totally, I'm trying, trying to understand the question. So you're saying it would be easier to hide the pixels in the image for high res? I think, I think, 
That's that's a good point. Um, because this, the number of pixels in the message would be set, in a high-res image, you would have more pixels, so it would be harder to detect the pixels in there for sure. If you converted that high-res to low-res, you would probably lose some of that information, though. So, but that is a good point. Thanks. Uh, I've I've heard of this myself as well. Do you mean uh, like shifting bits onto the pixels? I've heard. Mm. I I have heard of this. I don't know the specifics of how that's implemented either. Um, but I would love to learn more about that if you can like forward some info, or if you want to fork the project, by all means, cut us on slide. Need a proper boom. Need a proper plug. Um, any more questions? Yeah, where is this? Is this on GitHub, you said? This is on GitHub. Where at? Oh, oh sorry. Hold on. This is the link. Uh, by all means, fork. Contact me if you have any questions. <laughs> that's, that's an excellent question. Yeah, so right now I'm using Python's UUID library to do that. Um, the token could be anything. It could be anything. But yeah, I probably should do that. <laughs> uh, okay, anybody else? Awesome. Thank you all very much for coming.